All right, in this video, we have our FX9600 fixed RFID reader with some um, sensors input. I have a, a light sensor here and a mirror over there. Uh, this sensor is a little interesting because it has uh, two uh, cables out of it, one that is what they say normally high, one that's normally low. And you can use that to your advantage here to both trigger the start read and the stop read um, commands. So you can control how much data you're gathering. Again, I've got this in a serial port mode, so I'm using PuTTY to just kind of demonstrate the flow of information. But you could use the same concept here for any uh, of the IoT type connector uh, flows to initiate the read initiate the data flow and then stop the data flow. And I think that this is a pretty common way to reduce bandwidth on your network and really not overload your database with, you know, a million reads of the same thing. So uh, notice I have, um, I have nothing on my reader right now. Here's my putty screen. And if I just take some tags and I sneak them over there and I put them on there, nothing happens until I come in and let's say I've got this across a doorway or across a conveyor line and I break the beam and as soon as I break the beam I get data and that data kind of continues I've got this in S1 mode here so if I even added more tags I would see even more data hopefully yep there we go keeps going until I break the beam again and then it'll stop and hopefully you won't see anything else coming in here right so just to try to prove that i'll take my big bundle of bad tags and i'll stick them here try not to put them in front of the light beam um, it's a really neat way of of controlling the amount of information that you're collecting and this video is about how to make that happen now the first thing you need to worry about is what kind of sensor you buy, right? And boy, there's a lot of sensors out there. There are light sensors like this. There are proximity sensors. Let's see if I can grab one real quick. A proximity sensor is something you would put on a um, conveyor line with, let's say, tightly controlled um, products so that it's coming within a a millimeter or a um, you know, very short gap. You could put a proximity sensor on like um, a closed door if you wanted something like that. And they look something like this. Um, you'll either have things that are sensing um, magnetics uh, like metals or maybe liquids. You can get all kinds of different sensors. And those leads coming out of there will be a little bit simpler. Sometimes you'll just have um, <clears throat> you'll have uh, a simple three lead kind of situation here. They don't generally require a lot of power, so you can run them right off of the 24 volt supply line that's right here. Um, I'll see if I can get in a little bit closer. Do I have my other label here for that? I probably don't, but on the, I'll see if I can actually show this a little bit closer you get up close i put a little label on there to try to show which boy that's not focusing very well at all is it i apologize for that uh, but you'll notice that there's two different areas there i put a label on top there you can find that in the manual as well but you start with 24 volts you have three grounds one there one in the middle one on the far end your outputs, uh, general purpose outputs for like light stacks, one through four, and your inputs, that's your sensor inputs, um, GPIs, so that's one through four there. And again, on this light, I have um, two cables, one to each uh, sensor part, one that's normally, what they say, high and one that's normally low, and that enables me to do both start and stop within the same uh, light sensor. Pretty pretty cool, actually. I like that part of it. So <clears throat> how do we make that work? Well, you first of all, you have please re remember that 
the vast majority of sensors out there, they come with bare wires. You even have to put the ends on them. So you can use these little push pins on the bottom to lock in bare wires on the bottom, or you can put on your own little connectors and maybe make a, a pinout board that can go in there. <clears throat> you have to really make your own cable. That's unfortunate, but it's true. So work with a systems integrator like us to actually make sure you get something that's cabled up. All right, so back in the reader's homepage, Again, in this situation, I was just using serial port configuration. So same as what I showed in earlier videos. As you go into the serial port configuration, still push data, still the same stuff here. The only difference here is that I'm not doing a time delay or a periodic trigger. I'm actually saying, give me a GPI trigger and use the second one. Um, that would be the one that's in GPI 2, <clears throat> which is, I forget. Uh, that is the one that is normally low, uh, low voltage, you know, uh, then your stop trigger is the other one. You could flip them. Uh, if I flip these here, say start on one, stop on two, then I'd have to come back to the, uh, this, these two ports and switch those two around. Uh, either way works. Uh, when you're looking at these light sensors <clears throat> also recognize that uh, many of them actually require one of these kind of glass bead, that's a glass bead mirror. And that can be, in this case, this could be like 16 feet away, like a garage door opener, right? It can expand very long distances, but it has to be that mirror. Now, this sensor will also um, trigger on obstructions that are within, let's say, like six inches. So it is, you know, it's a flexible sensor, but uh, you just kind of have to know what it is you're trying to do. Does the material that's going past the sensor have a reflective face on it? Or are you, you know, looking to actually break this beam? So whatever you end up, you know, play with this a little bit until you get the, the output that you're looking for. <clears throat> Pardon me. In this case, everything else is the same as in the serial video. I've just got <coughs> on part. Sorry, <clears throat> this same tag here. Let me find some new stuff. Maybe uh, here's some new tags. I'll sneak those in. Make sure you see my camera, so you can see that I put something new there. It's still not here. And again, when I break the beam, I break the beam with uh, something solid like this. I should see, yep, uh, another tag. And uh, I'll break it again. Again, something obscuring it and something not obscuring it. So, uh, it's just a quick example of how you can use the reader with sensors to control that start and stop um, process. That's really important because otherwise you're just going to get thousands, hundreds of thousands of reads of the same tag impacting your network bandwidth, overloading your database. You, you really want to be able to control the flow here. And this is a simple example of how you can do that. Now, if you want to actually check out uh, when things trigger, you can also go to this GPIO section over here and watch the lights when I, when I trigger this. This should show as well. There you go. See that? On the top, this flipped. And then I'll take it off again, and it'll flip again. This gives you a chance, even before you start playing around with data flows, to kind of observe, are my sensors connected? Are they working the way I want? Um, and you can do the same kind of thing here with uh, the outputs. We'll, we'll talk about light stacks in a different video.